Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about another antagonistic pair of muscle groups, and those are the quadriceps femori and the hamstrings. Now, these muscles are going to mainly act on the knee joint, although the hamstrings in particular have some other functions in hip extension. But we're going to focus on their action at the knee joint. And to put it as simply as possible to start, the quadriceps femori are going to be involved in knee extension, whereas the hamstrings are going to be involved in knee flexion. First, we're going to discuss the quadriceps femori, and let's actually break this name down. So in quadriceps, quad means four. There's actually four major quadricep muscles, and sep or cef is usually the uh, prefix that means head. So this is four heads. It's actually a four-headed muscle. Femori meaning having to do with the femur, and as we'll see, actually three of these four muscles are actually going to originate on the femur itself. Okay. Now the quadriceps femori are a large muscle group on the anterior part of the thigh. Okay, so these are the anterior muscles, and there's four main ones. And those muscles are the rectus femoris, or rectus femoris, and then there's the vastus intermedius, the vastus medialis, and the vastus lateralis, so three vastus muscles. The vastus lateralis is obviously the lateral one. This is the person's left leg, so this is the outside, the lateral part. The vastus medialis is the medial muscle, and normally you would not be able to see the vastus intermedius, it actually lies between the lateralis and the medialis, but normally the rectus femoris actually covers it. We'll actually take a look at those muscles right now. So to really get a better feel for these muscles, let's switch over to this program. So this is an anterior view of the legs. Let's focus on the left leg first over here. This muscle, which is arguably the largest of the four quadricep muscles, this is the rectus femoris. All right. um, if we kind of, well, first of all, let's actually rotate this a little bit. Uh, so over here, this muscle would be the lateral one, so this would be the vastus lateralis, okay? If we go on the medial side, uh, just directly medial to the rectus femoris, we should have the vastus medialis, but the vastus intermedius is deep to the rectus femoris. So if we actually remove the rectus femoris like they've done over here, let's look at the right leg, we'll actually see the vastus intermedius. Okay, so you actually have to remove the rectus femoris to see the, this intermediate muscle. Okay? And while it's not a true quadricep muscle, it's not actually part of this group, I'm gonna take this time to at least mention uh, the sartorius. Uh, let me actually scroll up a little bit. So the sartorius is this muscle right here. And it kind of actually will wrap over the quadriceps themselves, and for that reason I kind of call it the seatbelt muscle in my class because seatbelt starts with an S, Sartorius starts with an S and it resembles a seatbelt kind of wrapping over the meat of the quadriceps femori. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. So again, we'll take another look at this in a couple of minutes. Uh, but let's actually go back to the PowerPoint. The quadriceps femori are going to be involved in knee extension. So that's kind of like this exercise right here. So if you do anything that increases the angle of your knee joint, so if this man started with his legs down here and forcibly moved his legs up like this to where his uh, knee joint angle approaches 180 degrees, that process is knee extension, and that's facilitated by all four of these quadriceps muscles. And if you think about movements that would that would involve the quadriceps femori. Uh, the major one that comes to mind is always knee extension, like he's doing in this image, but also the leg press and squat and similar exercises are also going to involve that. So when you do the upward phase of, let's say, a squat, or when you do the leg press and you're pushing the platform away from you with your feet or with your legs, that motion is actually increasing the angle of that knee joint. If you want more proof, you should actually go to the gym and try it for yourself or just imagine it. And you'll actually see that the knee joint angle is actually increasing with these two movements. And for that reason, these are two good exercises to strengthen the quadricep muscles. Now let's look at the origin and insertion of the various quadricep muscles. And what we see is that with the exception of the rectus femoris, all of the quadricep muscles have their origin at the femur. So that is the vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius, and the vastus medialis. They all have their origin at the femur. The rectus femoris, on the other hand, has its origin at the iliac crest. Okay. Now, all of these quadricep muscles are going to directly insert on the patella, or the patellar tendon, 
So the question is, how are they actually moving the tibia such that you get knee extension? Well, it turns out that in all four of these cases, uh, the patellar tendon will actually um, sort of fuse with other pieces and will indirectly insert on the on the tibial tuberosity, which is what will actually allow the quadriceps to move the tibia. In fact, if we scroll down here, what we see is that for all of these, we see that it will eventually attach with the tibial tuberosity. Okay, And that's going to allow the quadriceps to indirectly pull on the tibia anteriorly and, and extend the knee, increase the angle of the knee joint. Okay, So hopefully the quadriceps make a little sense right now. But now let's look at their antagonistic muscle group, the hamstrings. So unlike the quadriceps femori, which are all anterior muscles, the hamstrings are going to be posterior. So they're going to be on the posterior aspect of the thigh. And there's actually three hamstring muscles. They're labeled right here. We have the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. And unlike the quadricep femori, which are involved in knee extension, hamstrings are involved in knee flexion. So knee flexion is really any time the knee joint uh, decreases in its joint angle. Okay, so a good example of what that looks like is if this woman right here is on actually what's called a knee curl machine. If she actually begins her motion like this and then uh, forcibly moves her legs, that is her lower legs, down like this, you can imagine that the knee joint angle will actually in, uh, decrease. And that action is facilitated by the hamstring muscles. Okay, so these three muscles right here, let's get a better view of that. So right now what we're looking at is we're looking at the posterior part of the leg. This is actually the left leg, and this is its posterior. Okay? Uh, if we wanted more proof of that, we could uh, scroll down here and we see the heel of the foot. Okay? Let's zoom back in. So when we look at the three hamstring muscles, the most lateral one is the bicep femoris. Okay, this is also the strongest of these three muscles, but the lateral one is the bicep femoris. If we look over here, there's two muscles over here. The one that sort of runs on top, notice towards the proximal part of the thigh, one of them runs over the other. The one that runs over it is the semitendinosus. Okay, semitendinosus. All right. Uh, the semitendinosus actually overall is more superficial. Um, we could think of it that way. Whereas the semimembranosus, uh, which is also more lateral and a little bit deeper, runs underneath the semitendinosus, as you see right here towards the proximal part of the thigh. So the semimembranosus runs underneath the semitendinosus, at least on the proximal part. And so those are your three hamstring muscles. All right? Let's go back and look at the origins and insertions of these. Now this is kind of nice because all three of these muscles have their origin at the ischium. Again, if we look at this, we see that the ischium part of the, uh, the pelvis, we actually see all of them having their origin right here. Now, uh, if we actually look at the bicep femoris, which is right here, so bicep femoris, most lateral, we actually see that it inserts at the head of the fibula, whereas the other two, which are the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus, these are actually going to insert on the medial tibial condyle. So they actually have different insertions than the bicep femoris. Okay? Um, but what we see is that they are involved in knee flexion. And another action that uh, at least some of the hamstrings, that is the bicep femoris and the semimembranosus, are going to be involved in is hip extension. And hip extension is something we're going to talk about in the next video. We'll actually see that the major muscle that's going to be involved in hip extension is actually going to be the gluteus maximus. We'll talk about that in the next video. But in general, any motion that's going to involve knee flexion is going to be facilitated by the hamstrings. And of course, the most obvious one that you see right here is going to be the knee curl. But deadlifts are also going to be good exercises to strengthen the hamstrings, not because deadlifts curl the knee, but because they're actually involved in hip extension, which I alluded to. Um, the hamstrings, that is, the bicep femoris and the semimembranosus perform hip extension, which is mainly the gluteus maximus, but the hamstrings have some role in that. And so the deadlift is going to be an action that is going to help facilitate strengthening the hamstrings. All right, so hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully you understand a little bit about the quadricep femori and the hamstrings. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.